Now let's go to the defensive side. The defensive ends are Cameron Jordan, Brandon Bam, and Chase Young. Uh, yeah. Those are all really good. Those guys are all really good. Um, the NFC's pass rush is just, like, amazing. Um, and they're still outside linebackers. Like, the defensive end, outside linebacker, it's pretty much if you're an edge player, like, you can get voted into either of those, which I don't know if I entirely agree with. Um, your thoughts on that? Yeah, for me, they're Chase Young got in on name alone. You know, he's yeah. been good, but he's not been the, one of the three best edge rushers in the NFC. I'd argue that the best defensive lineman on his team is the guy that plays next to him inside, and that's Jonathan Allen. And Deron Payne is also a monster, and Montez Sweat is playing well. It's not just the I number that's right. fine to have sex. And Chase Young's probably going to be a pro bowler in the defensive line forever, but I didn't think he deserved it this year. To me, Brandon Graham for sure deserved it. He's been awesome for so long. I, I just so wanted him to get in career. and feel good. And Cam Jordan has been just a great player for a while. For me, the guy that should have made it, and he's kind of the defensive end, outside linebacker hybrid, and that's – um, what's his fate? Excuse me. That's Brian Burns. Brian Burns has had an outstanding mm-hmm. season. He kind of plays like a young Von Miller. It's kind of blasphemous to say – but he plays that way. He's fantastic. And to me, he's a better player right now than Chase Young, and he should have made the Pro Bowl. You could also argue Trey Hendrickson. The other other guy. He's been awesome this year. I think he's top five in sacks. And, no, he's awesome. I mean, if you watch the Chiefs game, it was everything. He he was just making Eric Fisher look like a baby out there. He was always in Mahomes' face. If Mahomes wasn't getting the ball out on – like on time and faster scrambling like you know he always does he is really really special special yeah Hendrickson's the other guy to me Hendrickson's had a better season than Chase Young you can't tell me mm-hmm. otherwise he should have made it over Chase Young Chase Young because Chase Young's gonna make the next 10 Pro Bowls probably I'm not yeah. sure Hendrickson's gonna have a season like this again yeah next we're going DT so Aaron Donald Fletcher Cox and Grady Jarrett um, these dudes are all amazing. I, I can't complain about any of those picks, to be honest with you. Uh, a name to put in there would be Sheldon Rankins also on the saints. He's a really good T DT. I don't know if he's better than any of them, but, um, he's been really good And the top two guys. So Donald and Fletcher Cox, like there's just no debate. They have to be in there. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, Rankins has had a good season. His problem has always been injuries. And Mm -hmm. he stayed healthy for the most part this season. But he's more of a run-stopping guy for them. I think David Anumata is their pass rushing guy. But for me, in defensive tackle, Jonathan Allen would be the name that I would put out. It's tough to argue because Aaron Donald's the best, maybe the best player in the NFL. And Fletcher Cox has been as good as anybody at defensive tackle for years upon years. Mm -hmm. And – Grady Jarrett is awesome. He's the one. He's one of the guys that doesn't get talked about he's enough. How good he is. He's the right, only guy he on the team. Right, because he plays for the Falcons. So, but for me, Jonathan Allen should have. He's a guy that I would say had like he's played at a Pro Bowl level. And you know, I guess it's a numbers game, but he should very at the very. He's a Pro Bowler to me. Yep. And now outside linebacker. So this is more of the edge position. Like we mentioned, DE and outside linebacker kind of interchangeable, but Khalil Mack, Zadarius Smith, and Jason Pierre Paul. Um, Mm -hmm. We just want to make a statement that the outside, like, we don't think there should be six edge players. I feel like it should be like five edge players and then three like off ball linebackers. So that would be like Fred Warner, your Wagner's. And then the one guy who I feel like could you could throw in an outside linebacker would be Levante David on the Buccaneers. I know Devin White, I mentioned him as being underrated, and he definitely is. He has eight sacks this year, tons of tackles. He's amazing. But Levante David is the the heart and center of that defense. Um, yeah. I think he made it in over outside linebacker, probably over his teammate JPP. Although JPP, I don't know how he does it with eight and a half fingers, but he's awesome still. Yeah, so for sure on Levante David, right? And I think with the off-ball linebackers, I'd argue with Devin White, it's like Jamal Adams. If they blitz you that many times, you're going to get sacks. And these other guys don't get blitzed like that, so they don't have your same sack numbers. It's, well, it's a very concept. It's it, But it's I not. It's, it's, huh, go ahead. 
I was just saying, I think it's also fair to say, like, they're also just really good blitzers, too. Like, true. Devin White, if he's, if he's coming through the middle, like, it's pretty tough for a middle linebacker to block him. Now, is that more valuable than him being in coverage? I would he, say probably not. I'd rather I have your he, linebacker, like, play coverage, right? I, I don't think he's very good in coverage, and I think they blitz him to protect mm-hmm. him because he's not that good in coverage. And I think that if you blitz a guy like Bobby Wagner, he could have 10 sacks in a season. I'd argue Probably. Fred Warner, Eric Kendricks, these kind of guys. Even his teammate Levante David could have eight and a half sacks. I think Levante David's been snubbed from every type of award long enough. And the Bucks are good this year. It should have been a no-brainer to put him in. And then I think that Brian – I still think that Brian Burns should have made it over your guy, Zadarius Smith. I think Zadarius Smith's pr- production comes uneven where he kind of beats up on bad teams when they blitz a lot because the Packers get up ahead and bad offensive lines, and he gets three, four sacks in that game. And then you play a good team, and Darius Smith isn't really creating any type of rush. He isn't creating any type of pressure. So I, in that sense, I think Brian Burns would make it. But he has 11 and a half sacks, and he got snubbed big time last year. So I get him yeah. making the Pro Bowl. I think year. him and Aaron Jones were – like carried over from people last year. Like Zadarius should have made it last year. Aaron Jones should have made it last year. They made it this year. And th- it's not like they didn't like play a ton worse. They played similar. Their stats just aren't as good as last year. And that's pretty important, but um, I'm, I'm fine with them being in there. Maybe it's cause I'm more of a Packers homer, but i um, happy Zadarius is kind of getting recognized for like how much of a beast he's been over the last few years. Right. And then the inside linebackers is Fred Warner, Bobby Wagner, you won't find any arguments from me. I know I'm a Niners fan, but I think Fred Warner is the best linebacker, middle linebacker in the NFL. I I feel that way. I do. He's really good. He's really great in coverage. I think their scheme does help him in coverage, but he's also phenomenal for the things he can do in coverage. And then Bobby Wagner is Bobby Wagner. Maybe a, maybe lost a half step this year, but he's still Bobby Wagner, Hall of Famer. And we, me and Vish talked about this. We think that there should be like either another inside linebacker position or one of the outside linebacker positions should be an off ball guy. Cause Eric Kendricks on the Vikings, I think, I think the best four inside linebackers are David Kendricks, Warner and Wagner. And the fact that two of those guys are not on the Pro Bowl roster is just messed up. Cause I mean, I, you could probably have Warner at the top, but not having Kendricks in there is like ridiculous to me. I mean, I have to watch him play twice a year because he plays the Packers twice. But, I mean, the man has covered Devontae Adams, like, on a seam route. Like, as a middle linebacker, I don't know. Yeah, he's unbelievable. I don't know who else in the league could do that, to be honest with you. Fred Warner. Fred Warner. Maybe. Uh, The the other guy 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 is Demario Davis, right? Demario Davis has been dominating for the Saints. He sets the tone. He's kind of – he's physical. He's fantastic. He's the guy – he's another guy I would say that definitely should – should have made it i think putting six edge players in there is somewhat disingenuous if you're gonna put eight total defensive ends slash linebackers to me you should put four edge players outside linebackers two defensive ends and you should put four middle linebackers and it should have been some combination of wagner uh warner levante david eric kendricks and demario davis it should have been four of those five it's unfortunate Mm -hmm. that they positionally just took three excellent players from and yeah. basically did not allow them to make the Pro Bowl. Like, JPP has been really good, right? Like, he's actually yeah. been phenomenal. But what I I think Eric Kendricks has had a better year. Um, I agree. Frank, and I'd rather have Eric Kendricks than him. So, you know, it's tough how they set the rankings up. But, but um, so, cornerbacks, Jalen Ramsey, Jair Alexander, Marshawn Lattimore, and James Bradbury. So, the top two, Ramsey and Alexander, I'm totally fine with. I'm also fine with um, James Bradbury. I've been someone who noticed how good he is, and he's actually a stud on the Giants. Uh, Marshawn Lattimore, I think he's getting in on name. Like, on prime time, like, you'll see him, like, clamp Mike Evans, right? But mm-hmm. his passer rating when from this year has been 117. That is not Pro Bowl good by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, it isn't that Marshawn Lattimore isn't good. It's that he's only great sometimes. When he plays like his best, he is a Pro Bowl corner. He's an all pro corner. He's one of the best corners in the NFL. The problem is there's just too many games where he doesn't play his best. Like mm-hmm. we remember I you said it. It's it's one of the funnier things I've heard when it comes to football. You said if Marshawn Lattimore plays 
Mike Evans 16 games a season, he'd be Deion Sanders. Mm -hmm. And I, I agree with that. It's unfortunate that he doesn't play that way every time. I think a guy that kind of got the snub would be Jason Verrett on the 49ers, especially because the story is phenomenal. I think Jason Verrett's had this great story and a great season, and he definitely should have been a Pro Bowl corner. Do you have anybody else? I'm trying to – honestly, I'm trying to think of, like, who I'd throw in there for him. Um, not really named – too many names are coming to mind. Verrett's would definitely be a good shout considering just, like, not only a feel-good story because, like, he kind of is the fact that he hasn't played and now he's, like, playing back to his, like, form in, like, 2016 when he was actually amazing. Um, it'd be tough for me to, like, think of someone. But if I'd really dug deep, I'm sure there's corners that are more deserving than Lattimore. Mm-hmm. And the next position is one that I think there's definitely some people that shouldn't have made it. So it's the safeties position, Quandre Diggs, Buda Baker, and Jamal Adams. So for me – You want me to hit this one first? Because I got a lot to yeah, say. I'll, I'll, I'll make it short and sweet. So the fact that two safeties on one of the historically worst pass defenses in the league made it, that just doesn't add up. You can, you can go, Vish. Yeah, so real quick with the corners, another guy, he just came to my head, would be Darius Williams on the Rams. Mm -hmm. He's had yeah. an awesome season playing on the other side of – Troy Hill, too. Yeah, Troy Hill has been great, too. So with the safeties, I, I have a big problem. So Buda Baker, to me, is a no-brainer. I think Buda Baker is yeah. the best safety yeah. in the NFL. So I think Buda Baker should have made it 100%. The other two safeties, I don't get. And it's not just because I'm a Niners fan. Like, Quandre Diggs, I should get more than Jamal Adams. To me, Jamal Adams made the Pro Bowl because he's a good football player that rushes the passer because they blitz him 25 times a game. And now, oh, look, he gets eight and a half sacks. Yeah, well, if you blitzed a lot of different safeties that many times a game, they could approximate his production, and he gets paid, and they gave up two first rounds and a second for him. If Jamal Adams is going to make the Pro Bowl based on sacks, then put him in with the edge rushers. Frankly, he has more sacks than some of the edge rushers who made it. Uh, but yeah, Quandre Diggs, I get to an extent. Quandre Diggs has had a good season. To me, he's not having a better season than Harrison Smith, who should have made the Pro Bowl. Jimmy Ward, a guy in the Niners who gets zero love, zero notoriety. I don't think there's many safeties in the NFL that can do what he does. One of Jamal Adams' worst plays this year was he had to guard Stephon Diggs in the slot, and Stephon Diggs abused him. Jimmy Ward, every game, has to guard somebody in the slot. They literally protected Richard Sherman, who still, to me, looks hurt. They protected him this season by having him play safety. And what they would do is they would play two robber safeties and put Jimmy Ward on man coverage on anybody, and he'd lock him up. And then the third guy would be John Johnson on the Rams. He also was deserving. He's been phenomenal this season. He's been one of the more underrated players. And the Rams defense is so excellent. They should have more than two players making the Pro Bowl. Like Leonard Floyd should have gotten some sort of consideration as well to me. But there's a lot of edge rushers. But absolutely to me, there should, besides Buda Baker, the other two safeties are questionable. I think Quandre Diggs is the better decision, though. Jamal Adams should have made it as an edge rusher or an outside linebacker, he should not have made it as a strong safety over those guys. Especially someone who's, like, not the best in coverage. Like, that's your main – that should be your main role right. as a safety, right? Like, you're in zone or man or something, but he blitzes a ton, and he's, like, a good blitzer. I think yeah. he might be underselling, like, the how good of a blitzer he is, but it's something, like, you're not – like, you'd rather your safety be in coverage, right? Like, that's the point. Um, and I think no. two names to throw out would be Anthony Harris on the Vikings. He's he's pretty undershadowed. PFF loves this man. Um, you know, they're not the say I'll do all, but watching the Vikings, like the fact that what, what Zimmer's doing there has been a, incredible with only like three actually like pretty good players in Harris, Smith, and then uh, Kendricks, but not to get on too much rant. And then the other guy I'd say is Adrian this year. Um I, I'm not mad that he didn't make it. I, I knew he wouldn't, but he's been actually really, really good for the Packers this year. And it's yeah. nice going from Kentrell Bryce to Adrian Amos. It's just you can sleep better at night. Yeah, so those two guys are super solid players. I just argue that the guys I mentioned. Yeah, the other guys should probably make it over. Deserving. But, yeah, for the most part, I definitely agree with you. 
And I agree about the underselling Jamal Adams. What I meant by that is if you blitz another safety, the same amount as Jamal Adams, they might not get eight and a half sacks, but they might get four and a half or five, which is still yeah, a remarkable number fair, from the fair. safety. Mm -hmm. um, the last position, so special teams, we have Tyler o Tyler Oat, the long snapper, Jack Fox, the punter, Young Ho Ku, the kicker, Cordero Patterson, the returner, and then Nick Ballore the special teamer. Um, again, I don't know anything about Nick Ballore, Tyler Oat. I'm not too big on the long snapper special teams positions. I'm sure they must have a good, like they're good gunners or good long snappers. Um, Cornell Patterson should have made it for sure. I think he might be the best kick returner ever. If you're looking at touchdowns and then yards per return, he's very on both of those. Um, think about the other dish. Any of the yeah, way. Um, so I'm not mad about young Hoku. I'm actually very happy about that. I think he deserved it. He's had an awesome season. Um, Cordell Patterson, totally agree with you. Nick Ballore is actually a former 49er, and I know he's a great special teamer. So I'm not surprised that he made the Pro Bowl team. Jack Fox, I do understand that he made it, and I'm happy that a Lions player actually made the Pro Bowl. <laughs> That's impressive to me. Like Matthew Stafford has been robbed how many different times of making the Pro Bowl. The guy I would argue that should have made it is the Seahawks punter, Michael Dickinson. Yeah, he averages really point one yards, point one yards per a punt more than Jack Fox. So the difference is really negligible. He's just been a really good punter for a while, and I think he should have made it. Yeah, punter. You know, he they always mention it, but he the way he kicks differently than a lot of people, and he does the kickoffs too. Um, he's got an actual boot of a leg, so yeah, it's actually he's Michael really Dixon. Good. I keep calling him Michael Dickinson. It's Dixon. Yeah, 